Hello! So today I'm going to be talking about Solenoid by Mircea Cartarescu. This is my first Cartarescu novel, and this one has received a lot of hype. Some have deemed it to be the greatest work of fiction published in the 21st century. So yeah, top tier hype level. First published in 2015, and then translated into English by Sean Cotter in 2022. Our narrator is a school teacher living in Bucharest, Romania. In the form of journal entries, our narrator reflects on his life, his youth, his mother, his job, his disturbing dreams, and the anomalies of his life. So many, 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 many pages spent on his dreams. The novel is grounded in the realities of the late 1970s, early 1980s communist Romania. It's a novel of ideas ranging from the profound to the mundane. Aside from its at times gritty realism depicted, this is a surrealist novel with a dreamlike quality threaded into its bones. Although Solenoid is much grander in scale, if you have read the International Booker Prize winner, Time Shelter, then you'll probably have an idea of the approach and style of Solenoid. Also like Time Shelter, Solenoid is extremely light on plot. Both these novels are exploring philosophical and political ideas whilst grounding themselves in location and using surrealism and absurdism to funnel those ideas. However, and this must be stressed, Solenoid is like Time Shelter, on steroids. Solenoid is a novel for the deep, deep thinkers. It's the kind of novel you could read once a year for the rest of your life and keep discovering new things. Each new year that you age bringing new meaning to its different passages. And being totally honest with you, I read this book far too quickly. There were so many single pages in this book that I just had to reread so many times grappling with what Cartarescu was trying to say, grappling and trying to make meaning of the dreamlike quality and the philosophy that was built within the dreams that are being explored. However, my impatience as a reader wouldn't really allow me to read a page more than like three times before I wanted to move on, even though I knew if I'd just taken the time, if I'd stopped and paused and ruminated on that single page for a few hours or given it some time, I would have been able to discover what it was trying to say. I can also admit that even if I had given myself three or four hours to really think about a single page and what Cartarescu was trying to say, I still might not have been able to figure it out because maybe this book at times is just too smart for me. But that's okay because the internet is a very glorious thing at times and I am going to be doing some deep dives on individual pages that I've highlighted to kind of figure out what Cartarescu was trying to say. This book comes in at 630 pages long and it is pretty much dense text all the way through. And in order to do this book justice, it requires patience and time. It's the kind of book where if I did want to grapple with every idea and thought process the protagonist offers us, it would probably take me one to two months to read. And with the way I'm hardwired as a reader, I'm afraid that I just do not have the patience or time to spend two months reading a single book. I just have to scratch that itch because I always want to be reading new things. But regardless of the pace I decided to read this at, I don't think it diminished my enjoyment of the book at all because this book is just jam packed with so many amazing ideas. It is insanely quotable. Now, I'm not the type of person who tabs their books or writes in the margins, but I do have a notes app. However, it would have taken me hours, and I mean hours, if I wanted to write down every quote within this book that was just fascinating or interesting or so beautifully structured. It is just jam-packed quotes for days. So what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked, the writing is absolutely stunning. And I really mean that. It is utterly, utterly fantastic. I think one of the reasons I read this book so quickly was because I was so beautifully in tune with the writing style. It flows so well, I just didn't want to stop. My approach to reading this book became quite fluid as opposed to being analytical. I decided to let the writing just wash over me, catching what I could, but not being too bothered about the things that I missed. But I'm totally fine with my decision to approach reading this book in that way, because it's just immensely rereadable. And I think if I was to reread it, and I think I will in a few years time, that's when I can approach this book from a more analytical or academic perspective. I really love the blend between the surreal and fantastical elements with that of the realism of Bucharest at that time. And overall, I just enjoyed the ideas, the vastness, the scope of this novel. Combined with its utterly stunning prose, it's an absolute win. What didn't I like? Two things. The first one is very minor, but at times I feel like this novel relies a little too heavily on the analysis of dreams. Those sections are beautifully written and you really do get lost in the flow of those sections, but it relied a little too heavily or there were just a few too many of them for my personal taste. 
And my second dislike, and this will be no surprise if you have been watching this channel for a long time, is that I am a big fan of plot. I don't necessarily need my plots to be vast or intricate, but I do enjoy as a reader having something to latch onto. It's just something I personally really enjoy. And for me, the plot of this book is just a little too thin. It is there, there is a plot at play, but it is paper thin. And there are so many, many readers out there in which that won't matter to them at all. But if the plot of this book had just had a little more to it substance wise, combined with everything else that is so utterly, utterly fantastic about it, then I'd probably be saying this is one of the best books of the past decade, maybe the past two decades, who knows, I might be even calling it one of the best books I've ever read. But yeah, there's just not enough there plot wise for me. So unfortunately this book doesn't rank up there in the best books I've ever read. But I tell you what, definitely one of the best books I've read this year. If you enjoy books like Time Shelter, Infinite Jest, Metamorphosis, John Fossey's Septology series, or maybe even novels like 100 Years of Solitude or Midnight's Children, although I would say that 100 Years of Solitude and Midnight's Children has a much more cohesive narrative. But still, if you liked or even loved those books, then I would say that Solenoid is definitely a book you should read. And through the process of filming this review, I have decided that I'm going to reread this book at some point in the future, just so I can maybe approach it from a more analytical perspective. I'll probably end up reading it very, very slowly in between reading other things. For me, this book is utterly fascinating and beautifully, beautifully written. I'm going to give it 4.5 stars out of 5. So have you read Solenoid? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, I hope you are all well and I hope you're enjoying whatever you might be reading. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.